Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? Congested. Yeah, I've had <laughs> these terrible headaches the last couple of days. Ugh, yeah. Um, like <laughs> blinding headaches the last couple of days. This, so, I don't know. I don't know if it's the seasons changing, or I mean, it's not just me. Every like uh, most of my coworkers have got the same thing. So we're all either passing around the same bug, or it's something in the air. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I've also had a nosebleed for like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a month at this point. I, I'm starting to think, you know, at first it was like, oh, well, the weather's dry. It's not really dry. Dry for here. I was going to say it never really gets dry here, but, but your but point's it taken. Yeah. It hasn't even been dry for here the last week or so. Yeah, and it's, it's still humid. going. Yeah. Um, crap. And raining most days, like right now. Yeah. Um, so I, I, that doesn't, that doesn't function as an excuse anymore. <laughs> doesn't jive with the reality on the ground. Yeah. So I might. I might have to go see somebody if this yeah. keeps up. But I, I uh, left work early yesterday, and I didn't even go in today. That's a funny thing. I've never really had nosebleeds. Really? Like ever in my life. It's never been a thing. My kids have. Like, I mean, over the years, like, they've had issues with that. But I don't know. I, like, I want to respond to that, but I don't want to go into detail. <laughs> okay. It's unpleasant. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear what causes a nosebleed? No, no, no. Uh, like the, never mind. Don't worry about it. I shouldn't have brought it up in the first place. No, I'm all worried about it. No, no. We can, we can talk off air. If you're still worried by the end of the podcast, we'll we'll talk off air. Uh, we'll um, see. This, you know, some people have an aversion to blood talk. Oh, uh, okay, that's fair. I don't I don't want to run people off with blood talk. Yeah, right at the beginning. <laughs> right at the foot of the fire. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. so, but we might keep it short today. I I don't really have much at all, really. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. a little bit of stuff going on, but. Everybody should ridicule Liberty Larry, by the way, for not recording yesterday for a random Thursday night football game. It was the first football game of the season. Yeah, but it's like, whatever. It It was two powerhouse teams. That you have absolutely no connection to whatsoever, except for your fantasy. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. hey, fantasy football's fun. Like, man. I would have understood it if it was like the first Alabama game or something like that. Like, yeah. I just assumed that it was. Oh, no. I, I didn't think for a moment that it that it was when you said that you couldn't record because of a football game, that it was just a Thursday night football game. Yeah. With no local teams and no nothing. I don't know. How far is and Kansas pro. City from him? Oh, here? come on. <laughs> and Baltimore. Baltimore's pretty close, right? You can drive there. Yeah, in a day or so. <laughs> a day or so, yeah. <laughs> it's, only, it's only about a... Baltimore is probably a 16-hour drive, 18-hour drive yeah. from here. Yeah. Kansas yeah. City's probably a shorter drive. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I don't like Kansas City. <laughs> Nobody does. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I I guess maybe unless you're on the Missouri side. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they have that they have that weird, weird thing where their city is like split, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's well stupid. the state line runs it through it runs through the city. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. Draw your lines better. <laughs> or build your city in the right place next time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I mean yeah. I assume that it was on one side when it was when it started and it just grew grew into the other side yeah, yeah. but i don't know I don't, <laughs> I don't, i'm not up on my history of uh <laughs> of missouri of kansas city <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um i don't know what do you want to talk about i don't know dick cheney just said that he's going to vote for kamala harris because trump can't be trusted with power I mean, that's... That's rich. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said when I read it. I was like, wait, wait, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Cheney said that? <laughs> Dick Cheney said that? Yes, yes, it's Dick Taney, Cheney did in fact say that. So. I mean, that you know, to me, it seems like that would get more people not to vote for Kamala. 
right? <laughs> yeah, his like, endorsement who's he talking is a, to? Yeah, exactly. His endorsement is exactly a, a win for her. Like, <laughs> yeah, nobody likes him on either side. Yeah, ex- that, you know that's a good point. Like, neither at this point, neither side. I mean, he's the enemy to everybody. Yeah, like amazing. We, <laughs> we can blame him for all uh, W's faults and. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like a radical right. He's far right. Gotta be according to the <laughs> left wing in this country. I would think. I I don't know the the way things are. I bet they think he's just. I mean the the le, the far left even has kind of like forgiven Bush for a lot of his stuff. Yeah, that's true because he grew government significantly. He did. I'm probably really happy about that. No, and and it is true. Like I mean, if you listen to different stuff from the left, like they have a lot of respect for George Bush. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they didn't when he was in office. No, <laughs> but like now, in retrospect, they do. Yeah, so. I, I've actually, I had that discussion with a lifelong Democrat in my family. Yeah. E- exactly that. Yeah. Um, when I was criticizing. <laughs> George <Bush>. W. <laughs> yeah. And she was defending him and I was like, what? Well, how how did we get here? <laughs> like, how is this, what is what, this world? In what world does this make sense? Yeah. That was years ago. Yeah. Um that was before Trump. Oh wow, that's that was years ago. Mm-hmm. Pre Trump. Pre Trump. So like ten years ago. Wow. Uh well, yeah, I, I thought it was confusing at the time, but I just thought, well, she's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I've seen it too, that there's, yeah. there's a, there's a lot more respect from, uh, for, um, George the younger than there should have been. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, and the only reason I can figure it from the left wing is that he grew government so much. Yeah. Cause he did. No. Yeah. He's no. the worst. I've been reading Stockman's book. I've, I've been sl- going through it slowly. Um, the great deformation. It's really about the 2008 financial crisis, but um, it's like 700 pages, like big pages. Yeah. uh, Dense. And, and dense. And he's got an interesting writing style. I do. It's not that it's a really hard read in terms of just like going through it, but there's so much information. um, That's uh, yeah. I have to stop. Uh, I mean, frequently I'm, and like think about what I just read. Yeah. But he's going back to um, the end of Bretton Woods under Nixon. Oh, wow. And to kind of set up like, oh, well, you know, here's this is the the world that existed and why. Um, uh, but he's quite c- critical of George W. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good reason. And other, and you know, he's a, he was in Reagan's, um, he was the director of the Office of Management and Budget under Reagan, I think. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty critical of Reagan, too, in terms of uh, handling the economy. And, uh, but of course, his his big point, like, you got to pick somewhere to start, and a good place to start is uh, coming off the gold standard. Yeah. I mean, that does seem to kind of be universally accepted, at least amongst libertarians, that that's mm-hmm. kind of, that that was like the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. when history started. That's when the fall started. <laughs> yeah, that's when the empire began Yeah. Um, in earnest, because it, it freed you from any kind of restraint on um, militarism. Yeah. You know, as long as you're, as long as your currency, as long as you're using a hard currency, a commodity-based currency, there's only so much of it. Yeah. But once you come off of that standard and your currency is just fiat, it's just whatever the government prints, there's no limitations anymore. Yeah. We can build big, beautiful ships. Right. All day long. Right. <laughs> and, and it's only <coughs> maybe in the last couple of years that people have on like the average person has developed some understanding of where inflation comes from. Yeah. Yeah. What the cause is. Yeah. All that money printing. Yeah. Well, and, that's because this time they just made it so blatantly obvious. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's everybody knows all the money we printed during COVID mm-hmm. and everybody feels the inflation. And it's like, you really can't separate those two, <laughs> like in people's minds. Like yeah. they remember both of those things 
really vividly. <laughs> well, it becomes really easy to understand in the context of the of the COVID stuff because you can say um, the reason that the the value of money has dropped is because of supply and demand and you have increased the supply of money and reduced the supply of goods that that money buys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's real easy for people to, to, to make that comprehend. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. okay, wait a minute. Yeah. You reduce the supply of goods and complete and increase the supply of money. So now you got more money chasing fewer goods driving up prices. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, thank goodness they didn't hide it as well as they usually do. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But the you know part of that problem there is that the there's been some decisions somewhere along the way, and Trump's one of the worst about this. Uh, but it has become popular within um, politics generally, or like the way government looks at the economy is that they base their idea of how strong the economy is uh, on the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and, and the stock market is not the real world. Like, yeah. It's not representative <coughs> of people buying goods that they need. Yeah. Especially now, um, where the government's kept interest rates so low and, um, increased the money supply so much that, that the, they have fueled speculation to such a great degree that that's what the stock market is now. It's yeah. it's just a whole bunch of speculation. It doesn't even represent um, a few elite business people with a lot of capital putting capital into things that they think will give them a good return on investment. I mean, that's part of it, but it's not based on any kind of business sense. It's a, it's based on um, like a lottery. Oh well, yeah, I mean it's basically <laughs> a casino. Yeah, like, but the the you've been forced into it because mm-hmm. there's nowhere else to put your money where it's safe. Right. I mean, in the average per- and so it means that there's a whole lot more money in the stock market too, because all of us regular people that have any kind of money to invest, you can't just throw it into a CD or something anymore. Like you used to be able to, because it's not going to keep up with inflation there. Exactly. So you have to, if you want to make money off of your money, you got to gamble it either at the the actual casino or in the stock market. Yeah, that's basically yeah. your two options. Yeah. Um, I so, mean, I will say the third option is put it in like precious metals or something. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, you buy commodities, but... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. But. Me too, obviously. I mean, I have yeah. I have a bunch of gold. Yeah. Um, but I... And, but you can and really, a good bit of silver too, like... Yeah. Actually, weight's probably close to equal. Value is not. <laughs> <laughs> value is not. Yeah, those two, those are two very different <laughs> values there. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that that's good. But that you know, there's a you bunch of only, extra fees that you pay on top of that. Like there it's is. it's a lot easier for most people to just put some money in the stock market it than is. it is for them to buy precious metals and then yeah. store them somewhere or pay for storage somewhere and so yeah. on. I mean, it's, yeah, if you're, that's a game that if you're in, there's a lot to it. Like, yeah. It's not just, oh, well, I'm just going to park some money here. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like you go to the bank and it's like, oh, I need to park some money in gold. Yeah. Like, it's just, there's just more to it than that. Yeah. And that's the other thing is when you're ready to liquidate, yeah. it's easier to liquidate stocks than it is to liquidate precious oh, metals. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, but as far as safety goes, like, I mean, that's a solid one. Yeah. And the price of gold right now is being driven by a lot of, um, national banks that are buying up gold. Yeah. Uh, cause they see a weakness in the dollar where they used to store their money. Yeah. Gold's crazy right now. It's over like 2,500. Is it great? Yeah. Right. Right. That's like my, my last big purchase of gold was at a, about half that price, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. I don't see it stopping anytime soon, as long as all the uncertainty and everything is out there the way it is. Mm-hmm. So. I wonder if it'll stabilize if Trump's elected. It may, but if it does, it'll stabilize where it is. I don't yeah. think that it will drop. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, it, anything's possible. I mean, it definitely could, but um, I, well, I'm not a stock advisor or a commodities <laughs> advisor. No, no, <laughs> like, no. no me neither, right? So, I'm not going to say I buy on instinct or anything, but, um, no. I mean, there's a method, Yeah, but, yeah. um, uh, I, uh, 
I, I think the next purchase time for gold, my next purchase time for gold probably is um, the next time the economy, there's a, a strong downturn yeah. in the economy. Uh, because um, initially gold may go up, but then it'll drop because people don't have money to buy it. Mm -hmm. And if nobody's buying gold, then the value goes down. Yeah. Um, and so that's your time to buy again because it will go back up from there. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the actual value of the gold is is rising all the time in that situation. But yeah. um, just the, there's a because of the demand there. curve. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, the price will go down. Um, so anyway, probably anyway, I, I, you, yeah. you don't really you can never sure. say for cert certain with those type of things. So cat is really intent on sharing this chair with me and I keep <laughs> I'm pushing glad she's her over away. there bugging you now. She was over here bugging me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this cat doesn't get enough attention. And I, I was thinking the other day actually and we've talked about this a little bit before but um a Kamala Harris election to president like really provides strong evidence that Voters are completely unnecessary for a successful democracy. <laughs> oh, wow. It, it, I mean, to me, it just proves that the, I don't know, to me, it just feels like the people just don't have any power if, if that, if that, if it plays out that way. Yeah. I've talked to some Democrats about it and, and I'm like, doesn't it bother you that like your vote didn't matter at all? Yeah. Like, you went and voted for, in a primary for Joe Biden because they told you Joe Biden was the guy and there was nothing wrong with him. Yeah, right. Like he's, you know, behind closed doors, he's sharp as a tack, whatever. <laughs> the sharp as a tack. We heard over and over again. And so you went out and and the truth is you weren't given any options anyway. Mm -mm. He was really the only option that you were given. But we'll assume that even if there had been other options that you would have picked Joe Biden because he's the incumbent and you think that he's doing a good job for I mean, some reason. The only and, other real option, I mean, RFK was on the ticket for a little, or on, I say on the ticket, on the ballot for a little while. Mm -hmm. Did he have anybody else? Uh, Marianne Williamson. Was she on there? Okay. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, I mean, she is. was another person challenging. She's, she, well, I don't know. You just have to go. I'm not even going to try and explain her. Right. She um, she ran in 2020 uh, also. Okay. Um, in the primaries and didn't get very far. Uh, no, not really. She had some support, she, but she's uh, she's really left wing. Well, she's like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Maybe worse. <laughs> well, worse and better at the same time. Yeah. Probably well, more these things of a, are usually a mixed bag. So, yeah, yeah. I, probably more of a true believer than Bernie turned out to be. Okay, yeah. But um, and probably still pretty good on the war stuff. I bet. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I would. I'm just completely guessing. I, I don't even remember now, and I, I didn't track her this year because there didn't seem to be a point. Yeah. The only real challenger, legitimate challenger, was RFKJ, and they didn't really let him do it. Yeah. So, but. Back to the point, you know, as a Democrat, we'll even assume that you would have supported Joe Biden in the primary because you think he's doing a good job and um, he's the incumbent, even if they had had an open primary. Yeah. So, but then after you, the the people <coughs> made their opinions known and Joe Biden was I mean, the he, overwhelming... He was the nominee without question. <laughs> yeah, Um Overwhelming favorite as the nominee or overwhelming vote getter, whatever. Yeah. I then, mean, he did have votes cast for him. <laughs> then when they couldn't hide how bad he was anymore, when he just f was flustered and flabbergasted through the entire debate with Trump. And they said, oh, yeah, we need to get rid of him. Yeah. And even then, like, if if they thought he'd have still won like that, even with everybody knowing how bad a shape he was in, they wouldn't have taken him off the ballot. 
No. Even then, like if they thought he was going to, if they thought he was going to be, they're perfectly happy they to have were, a brainless were, president. If they were polling at about even in that mm-hmm. debate, even if he had the poor performance, it just didn't hurt him. Yeah. Like if they were looking at the polls and it was like, look, like it's, he's still, he's still neck and neck or ahead of Trump. Mm-hmm. They would have rolled with him. Yeah. Like there wouldn't have been any question about it. The reason they pulled him off is because Trump was going to win in a landslide. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just that's just what the polling said. And mm. I mean, anybody that knows, like Trump always does better than his polling, outperforms his polling. Yeah, because so, you never know who's listening. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so. so then they they pick Kamala. It's decided before. And I, I, for one of them, I said, you know, why, why couldn't you just have an open convention yeah. where they pick Kamala? Like, even that would be an improvement. And uh, the person said, well, didn't they? No. I said, no. That's not what they did at all. (laughs) They uh, acquired all the delegates that they needed before the convention started. And even if that were the case, like, I said, it certainly wasn't any kind of contested convention like there's been in the past. No, it was a very scripted convention. I mean, it's probably been since the 70s since they've had since they've actually decided candidates in the conventions yeah. on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but well, I, and the I, reason I, for that is because it just, it, it, it dirties up the, the nominee, whoever mm-hmm. does come out of it because they just, the fight hurts them. Yeah. It's, it's so much better to have a unified cause I mean, all the, all of that's televised. Everybody's watching it. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, Stronger to have a unified message coming out of your party than a divided one. I suppose so, but f- but it's because it's become so tribal. Yeah. That, well, that is why. And like, that's know, the reason that, that works is because you, know, you want your tribe to be unified. <laughs> before, when there were contested conventions, there was a whole lot of policy stuff that came out of those conventions. People knew where their candidates stood. Well, and it, it meant something. Mm-hmm. And it and it would have an impact on who got votes. Yeah, um, and you know because we just had a better informed political populace. Yeah, now nobody cares. Um, they're too busy, you know, scrolling through TikTok or whatever to pay any attention to what any of these people want. And so even if it had been um, a sort of contest, even if they had decided on Kamala Harris at the convention. Yeah. If it wasn't already a done deal when they went to convention, as your average Democrat voter, I would feel like, well, what was the point of me going to a primary? Because yeah. even then, like, it's not really a Democrat process. You just had a bunch of elites decide who the next person was, even if they're convention delegates. Yeah, it's still mostly uh, this is the the leadership of the party has made this decision for you. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I don't, I, I absolutely don't understand how people, how it is that she, it has been a successful approach from her campaign to say, well, you know what? We're just not going to answer questions. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it, it boggles my mind that they can do this that they have done it this far and are going to continue to throughout the i mean she Mm -hmm. may do another couple of scripted interviews yeah short little i mean what was this last one like 18 minutes something like that the one with dana bash you mean yeah yeah yeah. and it's the only one she's done so (laughs) like yeah well they did the asking each other questions thing oh yeah yeah walls and Kamala asking each other questions or oh, however that one went. I didn't see that. Well, you mentioned it actually on the last podcast, I swear. I, was, I don't do <laughs> I think so. Anyway, um, I, the, the thing that it, it doesn't amaze me that they're doing it. Yeah. It amazes me that anybody would vote for a candidate that they don't know what her policy positions are. Well, I mean, I can tell you there's going to be plenty of people that will vote for her, but mm-hmm. We don't know how many people those are yet. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know the polling is all tightened up now, but we still got a ways to go here. I, and she's going to end up exposed because I guess next week they're doing a debate. Yeah, um, we'll unless see. one of them backs out. 
I, I suspect that that will that she will be well prepared for that. She'll know what the questions are going to be. Oh, I'm sure about both. Of, I'm and, sure she'll know what the questions will be. I I don't know that you can prepare her for what she's going to get for with dealing Trump. with Trump. Yeah, I mean, there's um, just. And I mean, it's not like we haven't seen her on the debate stage. I mean, we we all watched Tulsi just like eviscerate her. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we know that that's possible. Mm-hmm. So. And I, I I think I read somewhere that Tulsi was helping Trump prepare. Yes, um, which is good because Tulsi knows she knows kind of policy weak. stuff. Yeah. yeah, she she knows where she's weak. Well, it, it it's it's still amazing to me <laughs> that people I, I, so. I understand that there are people out there that just hate Donald Trump so much that they will vote for whoever Donald Trump's opposition is, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have some of that. But I don't understand how your average Democrat voter, and and certainly your average independent voter, can possibly vote for a candidate who won't make a a solid policy stance. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, people will push back and say, well, Trump flip-flopped on the abortion thing in Florida. Like, okay, well, I, I saw both of those little clips of him talking about the ab- abortion law in Florida that they were voting on. Yeah. And it just seemed to me that the, that the first one, he didn't say that he was voting for the law, actually. He said that you need more than six weeks. Yeah. Um, and... So they kept pressing him like, well, so does that mean you're voting for the law? And he said, well, you just need more than six weeks. He didn't like actually commit. Yeah. And then later when they talked to him, he is like, oh, I'm voting no. And it just seems to me that because there's language in the law essentially says that, you know, if it threatens the health of the mother, not the life of the mother, this is a significant difference in a law. Yeah. That it threatens the health of the mother. Like yeah, what? That like could her, be interpreted I like mean, her she, mental health. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, just, she might de- be depressed afterwards. So we need to abort the just fetus. The act you know? of having a baby is going to affect the health of the mother. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, <laughs> pregnancy if, if is a big health impact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Certainly. Um, so. so, you know, I, I, th- I think that what happened is probably that he was asked a question about a, um, uh, a law that he didn't know the details of. Yeah. Um, and he spoke, Trump doesn't read. Exactly. It's not like he sat down one night and was like, I'm going to read this Let's legislation see what the and new, see what's yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah. um, and that somebody explained it to him later. And so his initial reaction was, I don't think that we're loose enough about things right now. Yeah. And that, and that's essentially all he said. And then when he found out exactly how loose that legislation was, he was yeah. like, "Yeah, I'm not voting for that. It's to be misused." Yeah, which that's that's acceptable. It's reasonable. Yeah. I mean, Kamala has, first, like Kamala has out and out lied about her positions. Um, I never said that I was opposed to fracking. What? No, no. There's a video. <laughs> like I've seen the video. Right. Yeah. Well, she, you know, she wasn't the border czar either. Right. <laughs> like, well, I mean, that's not, I mean, to be fair to her on that one, like that wasn't actually her title. That was a title that the media gave her. Yeah. But like she had, I mean, that <laughs> yeah. was what she, she was, was responsible she for. She was the board. definitely responsible for that. Like, yeah. um, um, I, I just don't it's, understand it's really how crazy how blatantly they can just like ignore facts. Well, and one of these Democrats that I was talking to, said uh, asked me if I had watched the interview and if I had watched her uh, DNC speech okay and swore to me that there were solid there was solid policy in those things oh. so I watched them both yeah <laughs> I listening to her have you ever seen Bull Durham yeah yeah okay a baseball movie yeah um there's a <laughs> there's a couple of scenes that that I thought of while listening to her. Yeah. And they're related scenes. So one of the early scenes is when they have this idiot pitcher that has a great arm, but they're trying to prepare to go to play in the majors. And one of the lessons is essentially how to deal with the media. Yeah. <clears throat> and then 
later at, at the end of the movie, you see him actually employing the lessons and it's the series of cliches. You got to take them one day at a time. It's a team effort. We, like that's what she sounds like to me is she just repeats a bunch of lines that have no real meaning yeah uh, that you know they sound like you're saying something kinda yeah but you're not really saying anything you're, there's nothing substantive there I think Robbie had described one of her like earlier interviews you know back when she used to do that sort of thing mm-hmm. where like she would like take the question and rearrange the words yeah. in the question <laughs> That's like, that's wait, pretty close. You just said the same thing I did, just in different order. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you turned the question into a statement. That's yeah, all you did, right? Yeah. Rearrange subject and verb. Yeah. I, I don't know. She. Uh, yeah. So, but I I did. I listened to those things, and I didn't hear any real solid policy stuff. I almost went back to to my friend and said, maybe you should listen to them again. Right. In fact, Can you, you give me to- some cuts of where that's at in there. Yeah, you listen to them again and then you come tell me what solid policy information yeah. she provided. Give me time stamps. <laughs> and there was a, there was the point in the Dana Bash interview where, um, Dana was asking her about some policy thing. And her answer was my policy position has been clear. Like, I've already said it. You know, if you listen to some speech I gave or whatever, you know, go back and listen, Dana. And there's two things about that. First off, this is an interview that for people maybe that haven't seen everything you've ever done. Yeah, exactly. And now you're being asked specifically. And I kind of wonder if if in her head she was like, what was my policy position? <laughs> She's trying to pull it like it's like, it's yeah. like I know it's, it's right like, there. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember what I said, but I know I said it. So I'll just tell her to go back to where I said it before. <laughs> but at the same time, she comes off as so condescending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just I it boggles my mind that this is the candidate. And I was talking with my mom. I think it was last night. I was talking to my mom about this, and I, I said, you know, she just she comes off as just being nasty. Yeah. And so does Trump. Yeah. But Trump's funny. Yeah. Well, and, and, and so he's like funny and mean and Kamala just seems mean. Yeah. And not very bright. Not that Trump's very bright either, yeah. but I'm just saying like, uh, I I, I'm, but I'm amazed if she, if she's elected, it's proof that voters are completely unnecessary for a modern democracy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wow, we spent way more time on that than I thought we would. Yeah, that's like one line in my notes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of notes today either, but I, I wanted to talk more about the free speech issues because of stuff going on here, there, and everywhere. Before I do, though, uh, I did want to point out. You know, we've often talked about the um the U.S. Uh, for example, stealing the Iranian oil tankers and then selling off the oil in the uh, open market and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, there's another one of those kind of things that just came up. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. The Venezuelan plane. Yes. Yes. We just, <laughs> I, th- when I saw that report, I had to like go back. I was like, Are, wait, we really did. There's no way we really just like, janked some guy's plane. Yeah, <laughs> like, we did. Or, and or, the excuse was because of the Maduro misgovernment that this is okay. It's yeah. like open piracy. The yeah. U.S. is now functioning on open piracy. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know. It's the, the uh, what is it, the modern liberal order? No, no, no there's a better term. I, I don't want, uh, there's a term specifically that they've been <laughs> using about that um, the rules-based order, rules-based, rules-based order. international order. And it, it yeah. seems that the rules-based international order is we make the rules and you'll do what we order. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of the way and the rules-based international yeah, order works. If you don't like it, we'll steal your plane. Yeah. Like, cause our, what was the details on that? Didn't they? Oh, I can't remember now. Oh, yeah. I don't remember exactly. But it does so, see- like they just, they essentially, Picked didn't, it up and flew it away from. Yeah, they, well, they like <laughs> didn't they like lure him somewhere and I can't remember I don't now. Know. 
I didn't yeah, get a they lot did. Of detail but on yeah, it. literally, like he like got off the plane, went to where he was going, and they were like got on the plane and left in it. Like, I mean, yeah. who does that? Like, yeah, it's just out and out theft. And of course, the the Russian money, even though they're they're only stealing the interest off of the money, but that's still the Russians' money. Yeah, like, <laughs> right? I just I don't understand. The, there's a complete breakdown of morality in our government and maybe in, in our society as a whole, but certainly at the level, actually I could go on and on about it in the society as a whole, but yeah. certainly at the level of government, that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> um, a complete breakdown of morality. Of course, what else do you expect from um, any tax collector? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I, I did want to talk more about the free speech issues because uh, I don't remember if it was since last podcast, but um, Mark Zuckerberg came out mm. and admitted that the uh, the federal government had pressured him to censor particular posts um, and that he complied. Yeah. Uh, because there was a real strong pushback against his his company's initial resistance to that pressure. Yeah. So he says, who knows? But uh, he obviously did comply and censor a lot of stuff. And it may not have been everything that the federal government asked him to censor, but... But it was a lot of it. Yeah. And a lot of it was things that have turned out to be true. Yeah. And so you, you talk about misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, which I, they keep changing the definitions of these words, it seems to me. But... It's a completely subjective thing, and it's based entirely on what the government thinks is the information that should be permitted. Yeah. True or not. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and it's nice to see, it's nice to see Zuckerberg come out and, and say something. Um, I don't entirely know what it means. I think it's really just that. I, I honestly, I think it's market competition. Because Elon Musk has gone out there and said, "Well, I think you it's, know, in a in a major social media platform that we aren't censoring, which yeah. is also a lie. They are, they are, but um, at least, but it does have the perception more of being a free platform. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. I do think that part of it is is he's hedging his bets for this next election. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, the the wrath of Trump if." He's if Zuckerberg has looked like he's swayed this thing one way or another, could be pretty pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, and there's the talk now about the Russian election interference through tenant media. Have oh yeah, I, this I, big I heard scandal. About this, I think I heard about that yesterday. That just came out, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. it was earlier in the week. I think wasn't okay. Well, I just heard um, about it yesterday. Yeah, it was definitely before Wednesday because. Um, I saw that one of the guys that uh, posts on tennis tenant media or is one of these influencers on tenant media the had put out I, a statement on Wednesday at least. So oh, really? um, the only one I knew anything about was um, Ruben. Um, oh no, was is he on there too? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was thinking the the guy with the the beanie. Um, oh, Tim Pool. Tim Pool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't I didn't catch Ruben was on there. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't know. The The real question is whether it's a FARA violation. I don't... I don't know how it could be. Yeah. Because it seems to me that FARA violations, it's about trying to influence the government. Yeah. Not to influence the people to select a different <laughs> government. That's not... That's not a FARA violation as I understand it. And... You know, the idea that Russia today hasn't announced the, its affiliation with the Russian government is obviously just <laughs> yeah, stupid on its face. Um, everybody knows that RT is... It's Russian it, propaganda. Is Yeah, is a Russian news agency, yeah. a state news agency. Yeah. I don't know how that's any different than France 24 promoting the... A Democrat candidate like they do. Or the BBC or any yeah. of the rest of them. So it seems to me that if if RT trying to promote Trump is a fair violation, then France 24 or the BBC trying to promote Kamala is a fair violation. Yeah. Uh, but it really is 
the the more important bit is the the bit about free speech that you can't apparently now you can't go on social media and say anything that might influence the election. Yeah. I mean, that's, that really is the, the environment they're trying to create. Mm -hmm. Um, but only on one side. Well, true. (laughs) Um, the, you know, we talked about the Brazil thing last time. Now Brazil, I guess it's become worse now. Brazil has been trying to push, um, X, Elon Musk to have a legal representative in Brazil and it's so that they can have somebody to go after. This was after <laughs> so he closed somebody, yeah. the offices in, uh, in Brazil and moved all his people out. Yeah. Um, or maybe not moved all his people out, but doesn't have any, um, ex employees yeah. in Brazil anymore, I guess. Yeah. And so they're, they're pushing him to create a legal representative down there. So they have somebody to go after. Um, now, when you talk about, and of course in the UK, there, uh, there's a, a lot of upheaval about the immigration issues there. Mm-hmm. Um, and the UK government is going around and arresting people for social media posts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, some of them are legitimate incitement. You know, yeah. this is where they're housing a bunch of immigrants. Go burn it down. Like that's okay. Oh yeah, I have a problem with that, <laughs> yeah. obviously. But yeah, um, but I not all. That's I mean, those but, are the extreme cases. Yeah, but that's is, certainly not all of it. Yeah. Um, and now the the thing is that we hear over and over again is that the U S is the only country with a constitutional guarantee to free speech, and this is a this is a unique thing in the world. No. Yeah. It's not true. There is actually a constitutional guarantee to free speech in Brazil. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's, I think it's article five of their constitution, something anyway, don't quote me on where to find it, but but it's there. there. Yeah. And, uh, the problem is that it, it's (laughs) as effective in Brazil as it is in the U (laughs) S. Exactly. I mean, as effective as any of these things are at Mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's just words on paper. Yeah. Um, now Europe I think on the whole does not have free speech guarantees Yeah, because no government wants you to actually have free speech. Yeah. Free speech is a threat to power. That means that, um, you know, that subversiveness can enter the conversation. Yeah. And they don't want that. Especially today where everybody walks around with a megaphone in their pocket that they can just, blast potentially depending on you know the Mm -hmm. the reach given to them by the company i mean they can blast whatever they want out there yeah Um, and that's dangerous for people in power and i wanted to provide just a little and we can probably wrap up with this but i just wanted to provide some historical context for the arguments that they make for why free speech is dangerous Yeah. because essentially the argument is that it'll destabilize society or something along those lines right yeah um and, uh, you know, it's, it's bad for the, um, the general public and we've got to protect the, the general public. And that's why we need to limit speech. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Eugene Debs, are you familiar with this name? I'm not. He was a socialist and activist in the, uh, the late 19th, early 20th century. And he was imprisoned during world war one for, um, speaking out against conscription Okay. And handing out pamphlets and so forth. Yeah. And they said that he was demoralizing the American populace, and so he had to be arrested for this. Yeah. Now, what he was defending um, was uh, people's ability not to be enslaved by their government. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he was imprisoned for it. Yeah. For demoralizing the American populace. I think maybe the war probably did more of that than the conscription did. Yeah. Um, or no, I'm sorry. The anti, the conscription probably did more demoralizing than the anti conscription. Yeah. 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 Um, as another example, uh, in the 19th century, slave owners in the South, of course, cause that's the only place where there were slaves. So I don't know why I specified that. That was <laughs> unnecessary. Um, Slave owners successfully lobbied um, to have the United States Postal Service censor mail in the South that had abolitionist sentiment. Yeah. So the United States Postal Service was was censoring out mail in the uh, southern states that had 
abolitionist quote unquote propaganda. Yeah. All right. And they said um, that it would destabilize the public order. Yeah. I I think sometimes that needs to be done. Yeah, clearly. Um, I I think that we all agree. Remember, sarcasm doesn't come over (laughs) audio well. Um, It. I think we all agree now that um, the abolitionists had it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not a great leap at this in the 21st century. Um, I don't know. That's a pretty brave statement you just made, Mike. Yeah, I don't know. know. I, it, it's very <laughs> you, important you that may, I come out against have, slavery. You may have lost the Trump voters on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, very important that I come out against slavery. So now it's on the record. <laughs> right. I am opposed to slavery. <laughs> So whenever I get in trouble with the Southern Poverty Law Center or whatever, we can say, hey, yeah. episode 230, whatever this is, yeah. um, Michael made an open out, statement I, I came in opposition against, to slavery. <laughs> it came out hard against slavery. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, but it was going to destabilize the public order. Well, the public order as defined by the government. Yeah. And so all of these free speech challenges are really about the government trying to maintain its own power. Yep. And that's what we all need to remember. And um, especially us people that are on the side of wanting less government. He had such a perfect opportunity instead of us people for saying we, the people that are on the side, (laughs) we, the people, (laughs) we, the people that are on the side of less government. Yeah. Um, Um, Even a constitutional government. Yeah. So um, that's, that's why it's important to stand up against these things and to make sure that even if what they're trying to censor is speech that you don't approve of, that you should not never get behind censorship. Yeah. There's so much of it out there. I mean, obviously we experienced so much of it through COVID, mm-hmm. but even with the um, Israel... Gaza situation. Yeah. There's so much of it. I'd like just, just push the like, shut up dissenting voices. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, we, we live in a really dangerous time in that respect as far as our, our freedom of speech is concerned. It's, it's constantly under attack. I think Ukraine's actually the best example. Yeah. And if you think about, man, I, um, especially out in public where I was having direct reactions from people from what I was saying about the Ukraine war yeah, two years ago, yeah, um, that were telling me that I was an idiot, that I had no idea what I was talking about. The Ukraine was obviously going to win and that the Russians were getting beaten back and so on. And, yeah. you know, who, who turned out to be right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, my mom criticizes me rightly in, in some situations about being so confident in my sources that why are my sources so much better than other people's sources? Why do I, why am I so sure that I have the right answer? Well, part of it is that I'm kind of arrogant, but, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, I would say, you know, like, look at my record. Yeah. Well, I've gotten some things wrong, certainly, but on you're, you're vetting your sources more than just turning on the TV. And that's that, that gives you so much more um, credibility than people, so many people, because most people, and I'm included in this, by the way. I mean, I do vet out stuff, but I mean, I do watch just a lot of what's on the TV, so I know mm-hmm. what's going on. And the truth is, is it's all propaganda. Yeah. Like, I mean, so the the whole like sources thing is important in the fact that like if you take the time to dig and find out where the credible sources are and then follow those, you're mm-hmm. going to be so much more informed than the person that just turned on Fox News or MSNBC mm-hmm. or whatever it is, yeah. uh, because you're not getting solid information from these sources. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, read sources from all sides. And well, that's something I've always done. I've always, and anytime, then use your own critical thinking to yeah, figure out what um, you think is the fact, right I've, of it. I'll have to look it up, but I downloaded an app recently and I haven't messed with it a lot yet, but that's kind of what it does is it gives mm-hmm. you like a, a, 
bunch of stories and it tells you like where the slant in the stories are mm-hmm. and it gives you like like all sides of it. It's supposed to. I've only yeah. used it a little bit now, but um, I may talk about it a little more after I kind of dig into it and start using this app. I may start mm-hmm. making the point to use this app a little more and kind of let people know what I think of it. Yeah. Because, because that does seem to be like the idea behind it. Yeah. Um, to give you all of those, those, because normally I just go dig for them. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, you know, if I read something that seemed like it was pushing right, then I'll go find the same subject and you know find it pushing left and kind of suss it out. Yeah. But the, it kind of seems like this app will do some of that for you. So. Yeah. Well, it, as we don't do as many of these kind of stories anymore as we used to. But when I, when there's an important discrete story. Yeah. Um you know, discrete event or whatever that's going on that needs to be talked about. Um, it is not unusual for me to read a dozen different articles on it. Yeah. Um, ranging from slate to the American conservative. Yeah. All right. And just trying to figure out like what, what are the facts that are consistent? Yeah. And then try and figure out for myself what it all means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I put my record up against most yeah, and oh, especially yeah. on the big things over the last few years about the COVID, about, um, the Ukraine war mm-hmm. and, you know, it remains to be seen about Gaza, but I'm pretty confident about who's in the right there too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, now maybe not the outcome, but at least yeah. who's in the right. Yeah. Um, I mean, or, Ukraine, it was pretty easy to predict the outcome. But what well, like, should have been what well, should have been. I mean, it but, was for, you know, people ma- that were looking into it. Major media has been wrong all the way through. Yeah. Continue to still be. Yeah. Um, I mean, I watched. So um, I watched, I guess they're having some kind of meeting in is it Germany right now. But Zelensky said today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that that to he said that the U.S. needs to ignore uh, Russia's red lines and mm-hmm. give him the, the artillery to start attacking inside Russia more. Yeah. Like that was, that was something that he's pushing for like right now. Well, they've lost so much territory in Ukraine now as a result of them well, and trying to hold this tiny little bit of insignificant territory in Russia. So I will say the, the, cause I watched, I, I heard this before when I was on the way over here today on the mainstream news. Um, that that's that's what they were actually saying is that I forget how they measured it in like kilometers maybe probably yeah how, so many it wasn't a lot like a no. couple of hundred maybe kilometers of land that the that Ukraine is like holding inside Russia mm-hmm. and that and then they said and there was like but Russia is just like pushing forward in Ukraine yeah like and and that was kind of the question was like is this a mm-hmm. like good strategy. You know? No, <laughs> um, that was terrible. So, um, but uh, like I say, the, the whole idea, just the whole fact that Zelensky can go out there and say, ignore Russia's red lines, big U S government, give mm-hmm. me what I need to attack them inside their own country. Mm-hmm. And for us to just, I mean, I, obviously we haven't agreed to anything, but for us to even consider that just seems outrageous to me. Yeah. Like, I mean, like how, dangerous of a game do we want to play here and how uh, i think the, the the missing part of that throughout the world both in our support for israel and our support for ukraine and uh, back in the day our support for the kurds and et cetera et cetera et cetera like all around yeah. um is the uh the level at which it encourages those groups to antagonize a much larger power because they think that the the might of the U S government will protect them from being more antagonistic than they should be. Yeah. It, it, it discourages any kind of, um, diplomacy from these groups. Absolutely. And, uh, so, you know, I don't think that the, they talked about Pax Americana, you know, the, the peace that America has brought, but America hasn't brought peace. Not in a long time. Um, it's it, in fact, it, there's probably more conflict because of the support that the U.S. military gives to groups around the world. Yeah, discouraging diplomacy, sometimes actively discouraging diplomacy, like in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. 
it's it's such a such a dangerous game i just mm-hmm. and, and even from the ukrainian perspective trying to draw us in deeper into the steel like I mean, do we really want a nuclear war? Like, I mean, that's. Just... I mean, well, for Ukraine, the more they can draw us in, the better for them, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, to a point, once, once <laughs> right? The, like, once when... the nukes start flying, yeah. I think we're all in pretty big trouble here. Yeah, Ukraine nobody wins. Or otherwise, like... nobody wins in a nuclear war. Yeah, right. um, except, except the, the cockroaches. cockroaches. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, well, um, on that bright note, yeah. That's... The cockroaches win again. Uh, I guess the bright note there is that um, at some point, the national debt will prevent us from making war everywhere. Yeah, when we're riding around in wagons and buggies because (laughs) we're just Because we can't buy fuel anymore? Yeah, exactly. Um I was trying to make that a positive (laughs) thing. Trying to make it a bad. You completely ruined it. I'm just dragging you right back down. (laughs) Uh, well, well, the good news is it hadn't happened yet. Yeah. So, um, and uh, elect somebody who's not a Republican or a Democrat, and things might actually improve. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even care what. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just get those people out of power. Yeah. They have not proved to be effective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> years and years of <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. There's a lot of historical evidence that the Republicans and the Democrats are not um, effective and. Uh, prosperous leadership for the United States. Exactly. Oh man, that's a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that needs to be the new slogan for the libertarians. It's too long to be a slogan, but we could cut that one but down. But we could cut it down, I bet. Yeah. We could make I bet we could get it onto a bumper sticker. I'm sure we could. Yeah. All right. Well, um that'll be that then. Yep. For this week, I suppose. And my headache hadn't come back yet, so that's good. That's a win. Uh, yeah. yeah. Getting wins all the way around. Today. Yeah. It's <laughs> and we're just a bunch of winners. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I don't think there's anything going on that's going to interrupt. Nothing I can think of. I've got a lot of stuff going on, but I don't think anything that's going to affect us. Except football, maybe. Football is always out there. Like Football is I'm, I'm loving me some football right now. Uh, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> there's, there's, we've got there are more important there. things than football oh, without question like the podcast the podcast is important it's up there <laughs> well that's good it's, it's, it's on the list <laughs> <laughs> okay well at least it's on the list I suppose yeah. all right um, yeah so we'll be back next week you can follow us on Facebook uh, you can subscribe on iTunes YouTube Podbean like and share, comment, subscribe, um, leave reviews. You can always email me at michael at the liberty And uh, that's all the things, right? I think so. I'm really bad at that part. Okay. Um, I actually just put something new on Substack today. It's a little, just a little short thing that I thought was funny. Uh, cool. Dark, darkly humorous. <laughs> well, oh. The best kind of humor. Yeah. <laughs> so you can check that out at my Substack, which is. Michael's Meditation, <laughs> Substack.com, Substack.com slash Michael's Meditation. I don't know what the link is, but... Something like that. Yeah, I'll... <laughs> if you if you look for Michael Reeves on Substack, I'm pretty sure you find me. Yeah. Pretty sure you'll find Danny Reeves, too. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, subscribe to him, too. He Absolute, writes very I, different stuff than I, what I write. Absolutely subscribe to him, though. His stuff is, is really entertaining. I enjoy reading Yeah, it. especially if you're a parent. Like, the, the parenting stuff in there is great. Oh, yeah. Makes I me laugh. So. Um, okay, yeah, all that stuff. And uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.